Welcome ladies and gentlemen to my review of The Crow. Not the good one, the one from 2024. So I will talk spoilers for this film. There's not a lot to spoil, FYI, but if you don't want any spoilers, click off the video. I don't really think anyone cares that much, so that's why I'm like, yeah, we'll talk spoilers, but you have been warned, you know, anyway, so just again, click off the video if that's something that you don't want to, uh, yeah, to get. So this is directed by Rupert Sanders, and it stars Bill Skarsgård as Eric Draven and FKA Twigs as Shelley. So, straight off the bat, I've got to call out the casting of Shelley. She can't act. She's supposed to be a singer or something like that. I've never heard of the individual, right? I've never heard of her at all until this movie. Uh, now, that doesn't mean anything, right? Because I'm, you know, old. So, it's not really a surprise that I wouldn't have heard of her. But I can't help but think her getting the role maybe hinged on some financing because she can't act it's certainly not that she was cast on the strength of her performance because she's dog shit she's more wooden than my desk genuinely she's terrible absolutely atrocious and she really lets it down because at its core this movie is of course a love story right it's about eric draven and shelly shelly dies eric draven dies uh, and Eric's love brings him back his sort of love and seeking revenge brings him back so if you don't have good actors in those you know in, in, in the central role which this entire thing hinges on and it can't sell the love story properly then that's pretty bad now it just so happens that actually the character of Eric Draven and Shelley are both not great characters in this so you do kind of buy the love story and it's not you know, Bill Skarsgård as Eric Draven is actually really solid. He's great. He's the selling point to this film. And when he gets going, he's solid. Like, he's genuinely fantastic. But it's only in the third act. So it builds to the crescendo. This is like 111 minutes long. It's not super long, but it's long enough for you to get to that third act and go, oh my god, finally. And then you're like, oh, it's over. Oh, you know, because you see glimmers of the good stuff throughout the movie, and then it builds to that crescendo, and you're like, yeah, man. Oh, it's over? Oh. So, bit of a shame. So, what's the story? Right. This, I don't know how much this has changed since test screenings, but the core story is exactly the same. Because I knew about this from test screenings. I did a video. I had to have a Zoom call with Lionsgate, copyright, head of copyright. They took the video down. It was a, it was a whole thing. But it hasn't actually changed. So I don't know what they've done. The, the core story hasn't changed, but it does feel like they've edited a whole bunch out. And you can kind of see where there may have been a bit more story. And I think that they may have chopped this down probably about 20 minutes, I reckon. I reckon this would have been about two hours long initially. I think, I think two hours, probably about 20 minutes has been chopped down. From what I can tell. Just how certain characters move and certain elements are kind of removed, but they're hinted at. That kind of stuff. And maybe, you know, I'll find out what was chopped out or not. But we'll see. So what the story is, <clears throat> is Eric Draven is an, a, a drug, a narcotic abuser of some perspective. We, we don't really know. But he's, you know, he's, he's, he's a drug addict. He's in rehab. Um, and he comes into contact with Shelley. Shelley is... Uh, an abuser of narcotics uh, and gets sent to rehab on purpose though um, or at least she ends up with the cops on purpose because Shelley has witnessed something she should not have witnessed and some people are after her who I hear you ask well a chap called Rogue who has made a deal with the devil yep that's in this movie so he's made a deal with the devil to claim the souls of innocent people that would otherwise have gone to heaven right that's that's kind of supposedly what it is and i would imagine from what we can see in the movie he kind of feeds on them a little bit as well and takes some of their blood but that's not expressly stated and that may have been something which was chopped down a little bit more of the supernatural element uh, but he's lived for centuries and presumably, he's taken the blood of the innocent as well as sending their souls to hell. I don't know. It doesn't say, aside from sending his soul to hell. Anyway, Shelley's witnessed all of this, and there's a video floating around. This guy wants to go murder her because, of course, 
He can't get this out, can't ruin his life on planet Earth. He's, he's living it up, murdering people. Um, so she gets sent to rehab. They come into contact with one another and they're like, wow, you know, two beautifully broken people uh, become whole with one another. That's actually not a bad story if the individuals were a bit more likable. Like, FKA Twigs is not a likable... She, she doesn't pull the performance off in a likable fashion. There, there's nothing inherently wrong with having two broken individuals that uh, become better in one another's company, right? Like, there's, there's act, that as a, as a concept is not actually that bad. Um, but it's how it's portrayed. And in this film, it's... It, it, <laughs> It's not so much Bill Skarsgård. Bill Skarsgård plays a quite nuanced performance for Eric. Um, you know, quite almost timid and shy. Whereas FKA Twigs is, again, just wooden. She's just pretty damn wooden. So they don't pull it off properly, but you do, you definitely get a sense that, yeah, there's some sort of chemistry there and you can kind of, they, they ham it up so you can kind of, you know, go along with it. Anyway, um... They break out of rehab. It's, it's like a prison rehab, by the way. It's like a forced rehab. Uh, anyway, so they break out from rehab because Rogue has sent some people to go get Shelly and kill her. So they break out. And then this is the part which... This is the part which I think may have made the film worse. But I can't quite put my finger on if, that, if, if this is the case or not. So two beautifully broken people get out of rehab... They found one another. What do you think they're going to do straight away? Bunch of alcohol and drugs and sex. There you go. Like, it doesn't make... It doesn't endear you to these characters. I mean, at its core, I guess, they're staying true to who they were initially. But it's quite difficult to root for people that are still broken, even though they found one another. Because you're looking at that, and, you're, and most people would have experienced some of these individuals in their life is that there are individuals that are just screwed up no matter what, right? And they just, and, and they're vacuums, right? They're not radiators. Some people radiate and enhance people's lives, and other people just vacuum and suck the life dry out of everyone. These are two vacuums. They're just sucking the life dry out of one another. So you're just watching these people go on, like, debauchery, and you're like, I don't really want, I don't care about these degenerates, you know? If they had flipped it, and they'd been like, right, cool, this is a new lease of life. We're going to take this chance now. We found one another. We love each other. Let's go. That, I think, would have actually been a bit better. Maybe less believable. I don't know. But you're dealing with a, a movie where a guy comes back from the dead. So who the fuck cares uh, how, how believable it is? Anyway. So you literally just watch them go about their business. Just getting high and, you know, getting insanely drunk. Uh, bonking each other away and you're like and they're like oh we could we don't want this to stop we can do it forever we can run away we can go anywhere and you're like yeah these people are really just they're just fucked up in the brain they really are like again they're just they're typical addicts um yeah i've come across addicts in my life i mean they do portray addicts pretty damn well quite frankly which i guess credit to them <laughs> credit to the writing but again it doesn't make you root for them and that's the problem um anyway from there Shelley is found by Rogue and his men. And a, a pretty brutal scene. <clears throat> I think it's in the trailer, if I remember rightly. They suffocate her with a bag over the head. And, you know, you watch it all and it is, it's is—it's pretty brutal. Like, it, this is a gory-ass film. You know, this is a gory... Like, genuinely, a gory-ass film. I say it's an 18. Uh, not for nudity or anything, just for gore. That's it, just gore. Just gore. Bloody violence and gore. Which is, like, a hard R in the UK. It's quite, like... It's quite an unusual rating. Normally hard R's, 18's, have some nudity in it as well. And there was none of that. So it goes to show just how gory it was. CGI gore and stuff, but man, it was still alright. Anyway, so they find Shelly, kill her, kill Eric. He goes to the afterlife. Gets the explanation that's in the trailer. You know, crows take their souls to the afterlife. They, they help them across. And sometimes you get stuck here. This is limbo. You've got unfinished business. We can send you back. Cool, no worries then. So he goes back, and it, and to set the wrong things right, he's got to kill all these people because there are there is someone that should not be on Earth, and that's obviously this rogue character. And the idea is, I guess, in some ways, is that this limbo world keeps balance. You know, it, it is quite literally the centerpiece between heaven and hell. 
Uh, and it keeps balance. It maintains balance on Earth. I'm guessing. I don't know. Or balance in the souls. Who knows? So, Eric makes this deal with Crow Man in Crow World. Uh, to go back and start, you know, setting the wrong things right. And it is. It's pretty brutal. You know, he gets shot up. Experiences a substantial amount of pain. Like, brutal pain. Gets stabbed. There's this scene where he fights uh, someone pretty much straight away. And he gets stabbed up. And you can see he's in, like, so much pain. But he's not dead. And he's, like, he's really confused. He takes a knife out. And starts going at this guy. Manages to finally kill him. Goes to the mirror. And, like... And, it, it, and he gets scarred up. So he's not just like healed miraculously, he's healed but also really devastatingly scarred. And you can watch all the, the sinew and skin sort of build back together and stuff like that. Which is quite interesting actually, it was quite a good effect. Um, and I like the fact that he was scarred, like that's cool. You know, like that. it's good that they came back with scars, I, I like that. Um, so anyway, and then there's a scene where he manages to find some of the people and, and, and he's trying to kill them all in a car and he, and he gets lumped out of the car and he's obviously skidding all over the floor and he gets up and his face is all mangled uh, and he's got bones sticking out of his legs and he pushes it back in like it's quite gory genuinely like proper full-blown green stick fracture like it's brutal and again he's got all the scars on his face and stuff like this and you're like yeah okay cool like that's that, that stuff is good anyway um it builds to a big crescendo in the opera house and this is like the first final act. So it builds to a really big opera house scene. And it's really brutal. He's got a sword. He's gone back to the crow land. And crow man has said, look, you know, you blew your chance. You wavered because he found out that Shelley murdered someone. But it wasn't her fault. She was being controlled. And he goes, well, I'll, ma I'll make a deal with you then. My soul for hers. It's all about her. It's not about me. So then he gets given the crow black blood i don't know uh but it's quite cool like overall it's, they're kind of building out a mythology i guess um and then he comes back and he can now move between worlds just like the crows can so he can move between realms which is again building out the the sort of canon law the the you know the sort of world as, as it is uh and he's got a sword not from crowland just on one of his mate's walls and, uh, and he just starts hacking people up, like cuts heads off and like jams the sword in someone's mouth and pushes it down and the whole thing splits open, stomps on someone's head on a staircase and his neck snaps open. Like it's really brutal, like there's a sword through him and then he, like he, and he, he's wrestling with a guy on the floor and he pulls the guy towards him just so he can impale the guy's eye with the sword. Like it's, yeah, it's pretty gross. It's good. I like it. It's what I want out of a Crow movie, quite frankly. This was what I wanted earlier, but I get that they were trying to build it up. Anyway, Crow, um, um, Rogue, Immortal Satan Man, deal with Satan Man, has found out that Eric Draven has the power of the Crow, and he's like, I, presumably he wants it. It's not actually expressly stated, but it's in the film. You see it happen because he tries to get some of the blood into his own hand. So I think, again, some of this stuff was cut out. The building and the mythology was cut out. Um, which I think, in fairness, could have been a good... Could 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 have been beneficial. Because at the end of the day, this movie was slow to get to the third act anyway. And if, if there was substantially more stuff and less action, more dialogue, exposition, it may have been the right thing to do. However, there are gaps in the story now. Anyway... Builds to the end, Eric meets Mr. Rogue and uh, goes to him, tries to try, have a big old fight. Rogue gets some of the powers of the crow, but again, it's not really, it doesn't really go anywhere because Eric pulls him to crow land, where all the crows are, with his crow powers, and uh, sends Rogue down to hell. And then Shelley comes up. He's like, I can't, I can't be with you. Sorry, this is all for you, but I can't be with you. She gets resurrected. Um, and Eric's back in Crowland with the power of the crows, with all the crows. Crow Man's not there, and I guess he's the crow now. He's Crow Man, maybe. Who knows? And then it kind of ends, really. It does end on a not a cliffhanger. This movie is done, but it ends with him still being around and him being able to go off and do stuff. So there you go. You know what happens. 
the selling point is Bill Skarsgård. Bill Skarsgård is great. This film is not as good as Bill Skarsgård deserves. Let's put it that way, right? This film should have been better. Bill Skarsgård deserved better. And I really, really hope this doesn't affect his chances moving forwards. Um, I think I think the, the issue with this film is, <clears throat> it like, it, it works as a crow film. It doesn't work with Eric Draven and Shelley, right? This should have been someone else. That's what this should have been. Should have been someone else, different love story, right? So, you know, change the love story a little bit. Have them actually don't be degenerate scum when they find each other. Like, have that be their new lease of life. <laughs> so, it's just a weird choice, but whatever. Um, but as a movie itself, right, like, it, it's bogged down by the fact that it is a crow film and also that Eric Draven. You could have just done a sequel or another crow film and not have the weight of it be crow and Eric Draven. Could have just been someone else, someone new. And I think it would have been substantially better received. Also swap out FKA Twigs. Fucker Twigs. Because um, she sucks. She's terrible. She's not an actress. And not only that, right? I get it. I get it if she had something going for her. If people looked at her and were like, God damn, she's hot. She's not hot. She's not hot. She looks... Honestly, she looks a little bit inbred. Okay? So I'd understand if they, if they were like, right, well, we've got some sex appeal here. Excellent. But she's not... She looks inbred. So I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what they were doing. I don't. I don't know why they did this. Weird. But overall, overall, I I don't know if I can recommend it. I didn't have a terrible time, but I also didn't have a great time. The opera house scene is very very good though. There's like Rupert Sanders is not a bad director. Rupert Sanders made from a directorial objective viewpoint, there are some really good parts in this movie. Right, genuinely, there's some great cinematography, great lighting, great scenes, great action. But it's bogged down by the fact that you know, like, like the soundtrack for instance, is nowhere near as good as the original. And you could have just you could you, I mean you could have just you didn't have to use the original, but you could have you could have had a better soundtrack, for God's sake. Like, the soundtrack was terrible for this. Like, even the song that they used in the trailer wasn't in the movie. Even if they had that, it would have been better. Like, just do that. Weirdos. Um, so there you go. I don't really have much else to say, to be honest. It's just not... It's a shame, because it could have been... It could have been... It could have been a great entry into... A crow rebirth type deal. Rather than the crow. With Eric Draven and Shelley. Fucker twigs. And Bill Skarsgård. <laughs> anyway, I'm talking shit. If you've seen it, let me know what you think down below. I, I, can't, I can't strongly recommend it. But if you're a little bit pissed up and you want to go to movies, I guess. It's a beer flick. Like, you'll have a good time when it gets that third act. Anyway. Leave your thoughts down below. If you like what I do here and you enjoyed this video, support further via Patreon. It's the first link down below in the description box. Cheers, guys. Take care. Bye-bye now.